As a business owner and developer, I'm constantly running into issues and problems that I cannot solve myself. For example, I'm in the process of adding a new newsletter agent to my web app, youraiagent.com. This new agent will send automatic AI-generated newsletters to your subscriber list. But until today, I've never dealt with email before. If this was 10 years ago, I'd be completely lost. I'd be Googling best email sending services. I'd be clicking all the links, doing a bunch of research. But now we have ChatGPT and it can help with literally everything. Let me show you how I use it to solve all of my business problems. Before I get into my exact process of how I use ChatGPT to solve these issues, I started with a pricing question to the new ChatGPT-01 preview model. I've been experimenting with this model for a bit, and it's good for some things and not good for others. If you needed to logically come to the best solution for an issue that you're facing with your business, I recommend using ChatGPT-01 preview. It's going to think through the problem, come up with multiple solutions, and then give you the best answer. And after writing all of the steps, I actually like that it gives you a summary, action steps, and a conclusion. For this case, I asked what is the cheapest email API service that I can sign up for and use in my bubble.io app. And after it thought for a while, it gave me Amazon SES. I've heard of this before, but looking at the pricing, it is seven times cheaper per 1,000 emails sent than something like Mailgun or SendGrid. So it is the cheapest email service on the internet. And it makes sense it's Amazon, Amazon is huge. But I didn't even know how to start, how to set up an account, how to implement it into my Bubble app. And after the decision was made with ChatGPT-01 Preview, it's now time to hop to GPT-4 Omni. And the reason why I use ChatGPT-4 Omni and not O1 preview for my process is because of the ability to add attachments and images. All right, let's do this live. I'm using Windows 10, so I like to load up the snipping tool and I'm gonna search Amazon SES. Let's click on it here. On this page, it says get started with simple email service. Let's click this button. It looks like we need to sign in. I'm gonna sign in using root user email. I'm gonna create a new AWS account. Let's type in my email address. Let's go West Frank for the account name. I'll paste in the verification code, verify. I'm gonna type in my password. I'll complete the setup here. It wants me to enter some billing information. There's a verification code to my phone number. And there we go, we have signed up. Now in the search bar, I'm gonna go SES. There we go, Amazon Simple Email Service. Let's get started. It needs an email address for verification. So I'll go hey at westfrank.com. Let's click next. Now it wants a sending domain and a mail from domain. And on this step, I'm a little confused. This seems pretty complicated. What is my sending domain or subdomain? Optional mail from domain. So let's get my snipping tool. Let's go new. I'm going to grab this section here back in ChatGPT. I'm going to go control V, paste that screenshot in. What do I put as my sender domain? I want to send emails from westfrank.com. Let's send that in. It's going to read the screenshot. For the sending domain, it says westfrank.com. Let's copy this, paste it in here. Now, I don't know what to choose for these settings. So again, let's go snipping tool, new. Let's copy this, paste it in. I won't even write anything this time. Send it through. You don't even need to use your brain. It's gonna tell me everything I need to do for me. So it wants me to choose mail.westfrank.com. So let's type in mail here, then .westfrank.com. For behavior on MX failure, I'm gonna go for number three, which one should I choose? And it's gonna go through it, recommendation, given your setup goals and assuming you prioritize deliverability, without risking downtime, use default mail from domain. Perfect, it's already checked, let's go next. I have no idea what this is. Do I need to turn it on? Let's go new, boom, 
paste it in, hit enter. It tells me what this is, the key features, should you turn it on. Turn it on if you want detailed insights, you need actionable recommendations, you want to ensure optimal delivery, leave it off if you're just getting started, you want to avoid additional costs associated with this feature. Its recommendation is to turn it on. But for something that has additional costs, I think we should go back to O1 Preview. And because you can't do images or screenshots, I'm going to copy this text. Let's start a new chat. Let's go O1 Preview. I'm going to write, I'm creating an app that lets users send newsletters from their accounts. Should I turn this on? And I'm going to paste this in send it through it is going to think ask is it worth it evaluating the benefits highlighting the strengths the features and let's go down here the recommendation is to turn it on if i have the budget to accommodate the additional costs all right let's turn it on that opened up two new settings i'm going to snip this image let's go back to the previous chat so i can paste this image in let's send it through for the first setting, it wants me to keep it on. For the second setting, it wants me to keep it on as well. Overall recommendation, enable both engagement tracking and optimize shared delivery. All right, I'm gonna go next. Now I can click get started. We are now in the sandbox. Get set up, let's go to open tasks. Here we need to verify ascending domain. Let's click get DNS records. Again, let's go to the snipping tool. I'm going to snip this and go, what do I do next? Paste in that screenshot, send it in. Okay, we need to log into my DNS provider. So I'm going to go to Porkbun. I need to locate the DNS settings section. Let's go to account, domain management. Let's go to the DNS settings of westfrank.com. And it even pulled these complicated records from the screenshot. So it wants me to add this. So I'm gonna copy up to here. It needs to be a C name, there we go. And the value is this. Let's hit add, let's do the next one. And then we're gonna go to the value as well. Paste it in, hit add. It wants one more, copy this, paste it in. Here is the answer, hit add. Now we need some MX records. So I'm going to copy mail. Let's change this to MX, paste this in. Here is the value. I'm gonna copy this entire text, paste it in, click add. Oh, we're getting an error. So let's get the snipping tool out. Let's copy this, paste it in. I'm not even gonna say I'm getting an error. Let's see if it could figure it out. And here we go, the error answer must be a valid host name, usually indicates that there might be an issue with how the MX record is formatted in Cloudflare. Here's how you can correct this. All right, we entered mail. And then we have to enter feedback. Do not include the number 10. That goes in the priority field. Okay, that's our issue. Let's copy this code. Let's paste this in. And in the priority, we're gonna write 10. Let's click add. There, that worked. I can scroll back up. Let's add the text record. It wants mail again. And then the answer is this. Let's click add. Now there appears to be one more I didn't grab in the snippet. It's a DMARC record, and once we put that here, copy those values and put that here. All right, now I can click add, and this step is completed. For those of you pausing the video and stealing these values, I'm gonna close my account. Please don't waste your time. This is just for educational purposes. I'm not even gonna use this website. So let's click close, and I have no idea what to do next, so I'm gonna copy this entire screen. Let's paste it into ChatGPT, and I'm gonna ask it, what do I do next? It says I should verify my email address. All right, there we go. Verified. Verify the sending domain. So I did all the records, I just have to wait now. Then I need to request production access. So it takes me out of the sandbox. It wants me to send a test email just to make sure everything works. And the next step, just wait for the domain and email verifications to be completed. And if all of that is successful, request production access to move forward. So hopefully this video showed you how I use ChatGPT to move my business forward. 
to solve new problems that would previously take hours. Searching forms, reading documentation, searching Google. Now I can put everything into ChatGPT. I can snip images of the screen that I'm currently seeing to tell me which settings I should use, how to proceed, and even recommended next steps. To build out this latest feature, I went on and on and on. I ran into multiple problems with Bubbles API connector and hooking up Amazon SES, but it's all been solved with the help of ChatGPT. If you wanna try out some of the agents that we're building at youraiagent.com, I have lots of videos on this YouTube channel. We have auto blogging agents creating hundreds of SEO optimized articles at a consistent interval, email support, LinkedIn bots, Reddit bots, YouTube responders replying to tweets. Soon we're gonna have newsletter GPT. I'm really excited about that. To get started, head on over to youraiagent.com. If this video was interesting to you and you wanna build your own apps or your own AI agents, I'll teach you my process in the course, How to Build a Custom AI App. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there later.